This episode is also made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec podcast episode. You join me and my good friend Brandon. We're basically neighbors. Why aren't we doing this in person? I don't know. But um, Tesla full self-driving, no longer beta, currently supervised, uh, is out rolling the vehicles. And we've been making some videos with it. So keep an eye on Out of Spec reviews. We've been doing some tests and some fun things with the new software. But major problem, it's curbing wheels like hardcore, not even light curbs, but like driving over curbs, doing crazy things. So like the supervised in supervised really is needed. And it's important to mention that this is on a particular software version. We've noticed this started to pop up and it's on 12.3.4, right, Brandon? Yeah. Yeah, I just caught that last night. Yeah, and so I saw you driving crazy around town. I was like, I was like, basically leaving the office, and Brandon drives by because we live in the same town, and he's like making lefts on yellow lights. And then he, I called him, like, "Hey, dude, just saw you go by," and he's like, "I just drove over a curb." And that would be uh, a video I want to show you guys right up front, which is Brandon driving over a curb on FSD, and it's this right here. So let's let it play. Nice. Hopefully the viewers could see that just fine. But what happened there, Brandon? Tell us about some of the, the changes you've seen since version 12 of FSD, which we've talked about on this show, and what's going on here. Well, I guess to start, the yellow light, it, I've never seen it turn on a yellow light. Like It really it seems more assertive, maybe a little too assertive in some situations with like turns, but it took that left turn. I really wasn't expecting it to even like work out. And it, it just went like it was it knew there was a car coming, but the car just passed. So it like kind of weaved in between them. So I didn't think it was going to make it. So it's improved, but also some areas has kind of got worse. Right. And I think we've seen this sort of back and forth with every level of FSD uh, software. You know, some things get improved. There's some regressions in other areas. Uh, and it's all part of the fun in my eyes. Right. Like, I think it's cool. I think it's enjoyable. But there and and I know you kind of feel the same way we do about this, which is we are so lucky that we're able to test this technology and play around with it and 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 enjoy it. But in our minds, this is not go to sleep self-driving yet. This is you still have to supervise it, pay attention, know when to take over. And of course, you're pushing the limits, testing your car and doing it because you make Tesla content, of course. Uh, but there are some people out there that seem to trust the system maybe a bit too much. And that could be what happened here, just judging between the lines. Um, I just want to read this, this tweet from Aaron Jackson, who's a techno junkie who loves the outdoors. That's their bio. And it says their third FSD 12.3.4, which is the particular software version that we're discussing today. Their drive ends in disaster. On my first two drives, it seemed that FSD was driving too close to the curbs and other vehicles, but I trusted the system to be safe. After an accident into the curb, he no longer trusts FSD. And I think the, the problem that I find here is I'm not an FSD hater. I think it's awesome. I'm blown away. We just did a podcast talking about how much I love this tech and think it's so cool. But in no way should anyone trust this system, especially when you're heading you know, it close to other vehicles or curbs. So what is your take on this, Brandon? I mean, it seems like a gnarly curb rash that's around the entire wheel. Yeah. That's like Hertz level curb rash right there. <laughs> and I don't know, like I knew uh, James was telling me that he saw somewhere that the model three is like the most dialed in for full self-driving. So it doesn't, there hasn't been much people getting their, there hasn't been many people getting their like wheels curbed. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it seems like maybe the bigger Teslas are kind of struggling with curbs. I mean, just right. like regular people do too. Yeah, so so that that was sort of my question and maybe posing it to the audience is, are Tesla owners so bad at driving as a whole? I mean this sincerely. A Tesla owners are not great drivers as, as an overall average. Um, a lot of them are rental cars at Hertz or whatever. Are they getting the data from like people who constantly hit curbs and they're thinking, oh yeah, that's fine. Let's throw all that in there. I mean, what what's your opinion? Or is this purely just a 
you know, so much more data is gathered on Model 3 as an example, a smaller vehicle. And as soon as you uh, put it on a Model S or an X or something bigger, that the vehicle's not programmed to know its own size. I mean, it seems weird. Kind of seems like they could just expand the box that the car is, where like what you know, when those to turn around stuff, they could just make the you know, like the box around it in the digital world bigger, and that could probably solve it. Yeah, like you would think the car knows how big it is, or at least the system would say, Oh, I'm plugged into a Model S. Here's my width, here's my length. Don't go beyond that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, it seems pretty interesting. So over the last few software updates, we've seen 12.3.2.1, which is the first one that I experienced. That was a mind-blowing experience for me. That was really good. Then came 12.3.3, which almost seemed to go backwards a little bit in terms of user experience, and I saw some complaints on that. And I think the overall consensus on 12.3.4 is it is improved. Again, it's back to being more aggressive. It gets out into traffic. It accelerates. It does what it needs to do except it's really loving curbs. Yeah, it's really, really hasty. It seems like it's like I got to be more assertive and it kind of forgets to avoid the curbs. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. That's wild. So yeah. the, the big question, the, the question for me is there has to be a beta group of testers inside of Tesla that's testing each software version before it comes out between you and this person and the other anecdotal evidence i've heard around offline you would think someone before this software gets rolled out would say oh wow actually it's just getting too close to other curbs other obstacles i remember even in 12.3.2.1 it would get pretty close to curbs and stuff but we never had it hit any curbs in your model y when i experienced that but you would think someone in the company would like test drive this and be like okay let's just open up the window also why do you have to drive so close to curbs? Is it truly a case of this is data from Tesla drivers or is it some bad programming? Just lack of programming. There's less code. It's using only video clips, which, I mean, I, I was told that they have some kind of internal safety score system for rating the clips that they use. But I feel like there's just not enough data that they can't really toss out that much yet. Yeah, so definitely something interesting. I, I don't think I've seen an FSD version up to this point be so aggressive on wheels before. I know in Auto Park, uh, when that launched in V12 for the non-ultrasonic cars, there was some concern about curbing wheels on uh, SNX especially. So I, I'm sure, I mean, obviously Tesla is aware of this. Why they don't just fix it, I don't know. I'm not an expert on coding these things. All I see is, you know, a bunch of Teslas hitting curbs and us going, what the heck's going on here? So I'm really curious to see how long it takes before the next software version comes out uh, with a patch. What else it improves? Maybe there are some regression issues there as well where things get worse uh, with new software and new lines of code and new AI-driven things. I mean, it's all pretty interesting to see how this goes. Um, we're about to go head out for a drive in your car and enjoy that and uh, see how that all goes. But any final thoughts on the curb thing? Would you recommend drivers to take over if you feel it gets close? Or now that you've experienced it, what's your recommendation to people using the system? Well, I didn't really think much of it when it actually happened, but I'm actually really glad it went over the curb instead of like right into it because I didn't have my uh, my little curb protectors on that wheel. So I would have been you know having to get a new wheel or get it fixed. And I feel like, a lot of people are going to have that. Like, it's not going to be like 10 people. It's probably going to be a couple hundred people are going to get their curbs rimmed. And then they're going to look to Tesla and be like, what are we doing? It's like, well, you're supposed to supervise it. So I think if it's, you feel like it's going to happen, I would definitely try to intervene. Like, that's what it's supposed to do. Like, that's how it kind of learns is by intervening. So definitely intervene. If it's going to do that, don't just let it do it and then complain. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the recommendation is, um, don't let it crash into stuff to make a funny YouTube video, which is what I would do. It's yeah. uh, <laughs> take over and actually train the system. Do you think it learns when you take over? Does it flag something? Is there, there used to be that camera button on the screen. You could log something. It now asks well, you. send a voice message. I, do, who knows if I actually read it, but yeah, does like, anyone like listen 11, to I would message? progressively get meaner and meaner as I had to disengage every time. 
Yeah, I think I would be, I feel bad if someone is actually listening to those voice messages because I'm verbally abusive to that system. I'm yep. like, what the F did you just do? You almost killed us driving over a curb, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I think well, the whole thing is people just can't get complacent. Because people, like they say, they, they've trusted it. They, they trust it to be safe, but it's also not a complete system. So don't get complacent. Yeah, totally. And I think like when the system is used properly, monitored properly, it shouldn't be that dangerous because you yeah. just take over whenever it does something wrong. But issues like this and issues like you obviously testing it for a video, like letting it drive over curves, letting it get really close to stuff. That's where it goes, you know, for a normal person, it can might maybe wake them up and give them the, you know, the lack of confidence that they really should have in a system like this which is a good reminder to everyone, which is like, we're having fun. We're testing. This is crazy cool tech, but you still got to take over and pay attention. Yep. So cool. Thanks for joining Brandon. Pretty quick one for you guys today. If, if you drive on FSD, has it tried to curb your wheels on this software version? Of course, we're going to be evaluating, uh, especially now that it seems like we've had such a major leap in, um, I would say capability of the system. We're we're evaluating FSD with a closer eye now with this new version 12 software architecture. I've been enjoying it. More to come. And uh, thanks for watching another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. We'll see you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.